Hi, I'm Emily Day, and this is The American Athlete. I've been heckled before. I shank a ball and someone yells, shank you very much. You hear it, you recognize it, and then you just move on and you're ready for the next point. So Hermosa Beach, we've been coming to this spot for a while now. I know we took some years off, but I personally grew up coming and watching the players play in Hermosa Beach. There's very knowledgeable fans here. This is where we practice, this is where we live, this is where we train. People know who we are and they'll stop us. Like we signed autographs after our matches, people will ask for photos. Everyone's very kind and respectful. So it sometimes takes a little bit to get to the player's tent after a match, but it's all fun. There's been games going on since, I don't know, probably Tuesday with AVP first, AVP next. I mean, we have courts going on north and south of the pier of all ages competing. And it just blows my mind that there's so many people interested in this sport and out there, um, it's awesome. So I started playing volleyball when I was about 15 years old and up until then I was a soccer player and that's all I wanted to do. And I actually had some friends that were playing volleyball and I slowly started to get better and I would say right around my junior year of high school I knew that like volleyball was my sport. I think it only benefits you to play multiple sports, especially growing up. Just learning how to be an athlete first instead of specializing in just one sport. I see a lot of kids these days getting burnt out in their sport. So I think you should play as many sports as you can for as long as you can. It'll only make you better in whatever you decide to do. So when I decided to become a natural professional at beach volleyball, it's a lot of personal responsibility. We pick our own coaches, so we're hiring and paying our own coaches. We have to find a trainer, and luckily I get to work with USA Volleyball. And so it's no longer for fun, right? Of course I still love it and enjoy it, but there's days I don't want to go to the gym, but it's, it's my job, and so I need to go to the gym. There's days on the sand that's really hard to jump and move. And you don't feel great, but you get through it. Just like having any job, you have to get it done. And so I think just the dedication to it is something that I really had to turn on, on the good days and the bad days. A lot of people talk about on-court communication. I think something that my partner and I, Betsy Flint, do really well is the talking between the points. You'll often see us come together, we sometimes hold hands, or we really connect and we're exchanging information right away. Whether it's like, oh, they're running this defense on you, or I want this set a little bit different. The communication in between the points are just as big as the ones while we're setting each other and during the points. Before the match, we'll always watch the team that we're gonna play. We're able to catch their games online. And so there's a lot of before match preparation where we come in with a strategy of like who we wanna serve, where, maybe they're a great serving team, so we need to be ready for that. But when you get on the court, it's funny, your game plan can go out the window. That player could be unstoppable that day. And so it's a lot of problem solving. And that's when the communication between partners is huge because Betsy might pick up on something that I didn't see. So when you get out there, you have to be ready to change and adapt. I think that you can't underestimate the amount of time that you just play and compete. Just get into tournaments, start playing, start competing. If you have time, try to hire a coach to tune up some technical stuff. I also suggest filming your practices and your matches so you can go back and watch them later. That can all expedite your process of improving. Betsy and I are shooting for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. 
We have a ton of great American teams, so it's a tight race and it's gonna come down to the wire. That's the ultimate goal.